Okay, we're going to start looking at um, something called binomial distributions. And binomial distributions are situations in which there are two possible outcomes and only two outcomes. Um, there has to be a fixed number of events, fixed number of times that the person's going to do whatever the event is. Um, all the observations have to be independent, so just because they're successful once doesn't affect their success the next time. And the probability of success has to be the same for all observations. We're going to use um, two features on the calculator to help us to do this, binomial PDF and binomial CDF. And let me give you a situation um, that we're talking about in class. Let's imagine Kobe Bryant shooting free throws, and we're going to ask him to shoot five free throws. First of all, it's binomial because there are two events. Either he makes it or he misses. And his free throw percentage, by the way, is 84%. Um, which means that he'll make 84% of all of his free throws. So um, it's a fixed number of observations because he's going to do five times only. Um, they're independent of one another. Just because he makes one, um, it is independent of the other. Um, um, he's always going to be 84%, and therefore it's 16% would be his success. So this is a binomial situation. If I asked what was his probability of making exactly three out of the five free throws, that would be a binomial PDF problem because I'm asking for just one possible outcome. However, if I ask him what's the probability of him making three or more free throws, then that would be a binomial CDF because now we've got to take into account three, make him making three free throws, four free throws, or five free throws. Three or more includes all those events. So those kind of questions would use binomial CDF. So keep that in mind as we progress through this. So the question I'm going to use constantly throughout this video is, again, Kobe Bryant is an 84% free throw shooter, and he is going to make, um, um, we're going to see what's the probability of him making 80, um, exactly three out of five free throws. Okay? And we're going to examine this as a binomial situation and look at how we can calculate this. Okay? So here's some notes that will help you... Um, understand binomial situations um, has to be some sort of a chance process that we're going to ask them to do over and over again and successful is uh, um, one event failure would be the other and it has to be two events so um, the easiest way to check if a binomial situation is actually to use the word binomial by Bi meaning it has to be two possible outcomes either success or failure so in my scenario Kobe Bryant shooting free throws either he makes it or he misses it there are no other outcomes possible um, a fixed number of trials, that's the nom part, which kind of means, if you notice, means number. And um, in this case, yeah, he's doing five free throws, a total of five. And independent means that um, the I in binomial means independent, which means that his probability of making one free throw does not influence the other. And they have actually done some um, long-term studies because there's a theory out there that if you shoot free throws and you get hot, you're more likely to make a free throw if you have a good vibes going on, good feeling going on. But they've done success um, studies on this and found out that no, um, people will make free throws consistent with whatever their average is. If they're an 84% free throw shooter, they will consistently make 84% whether they've made 10 in a row or they've made none in a row. Okay, The probability of any one event is still 84%. And on um, all trials, the probability must be the, must be the same. And Kobe Bryant has shown us over the, his career that he makes um, free throws 84% of the time. So we've met all four criteria to be binomial. And it's very important that you show that anytime you have a binomial situation, that all four of these criteria are met. And so that's where the word binomial kind of helps you keep track of that. Because all four is like a checklist. All four, you have to be able to check off all four of these in order before, before you use any kind of a binomial formula. Make sure to include these notes in your compositional book and on the worksheet provided for this video. So uh, another classic binomial situation besides Kobe Bryant shoot free throws is tossing a coin. Because there are again two outcomes, either heads or tails. And if I ask you to toss the coin ten times, that's a fixed number of outcomes. Um, certainly one coin, does, one coin flip does not influence another. We've talked about this before. Um, coins do not remember, because if i got three heads in a row, my probability of getting a heads or tails is not affected on the fourth toss. Um, and um, they are definitely, um, as I mentioned, independent of one another. The probabilities is definitely known throughout the whole process. The probability will always be 0.5. Okay? So the probability of heads in, in tosses is our binomial random variable. Sometimes we use the variable x. And the probabilities of all the possible outcomes is called a binomial distribution. In this case, there are two outcomes, heads being 0.5 and tails being 0.5. So that would be my binomial distribution.
Okay, so again, if you notice here, we need to check for all four conditions to make sure that it's truly a binomial. And you actually have to write out all four conditions that are present before you can use any kind of a binomial formula. Okay, we can um, generalize this using this formula here. And this represents the number of arrangements, is the number of ways that we can arrange our successes. P is the probability of success. K is the number of successes. So if the probability of success is P, then the probability of failure would then be 1 minus P. And the number of failures would be however many trials minus our successes that we're looking for. Um, so the formula looks ugly, but when I explain it with the Kobe Bryant thing, I think you'll see how this works. So remember, Kobe Bryant, um, we want, we're interested in him making exactly 3 out of 5 free throws. So if I use this formula, his probability of success is 0.84, and we want him to be successful 3 times. We're then going to multiply this by his probability of failure, which would be 1 minus 0.84, which is 0.16. And we want him to, be fa to fail actually two times. So you see how the 3 plus 2 equals the total amount of times we want him to shoot a free throw, in this case 5. Then we need to figure out how many different ways can he shoot three free th um, make three free throws and miss two. And that's where this formula comes in. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because when we learn how to use the binomial CDF and binomial PDF buttons, it kind of skips over this. But this is related to, if you remember our structure tutorial, NCR, the combinations. We read this as, um, for example, for our Kobe Bryant, it would be five combinations taken three at a time, or this is read as five choose three in this particular case. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because the binomial CDF and PDF takes into account this and we don't actually have to use these buttons on the calculator. But this notation, 5 choose 3, it's not a fraction. It tell, it's a way to calculate how many different ways that Colby Bryant can make three free throws and miss two. And we found out in class that there were 10 different ways he can do that. Okay, so this number turns out to be 10. And this is how we would calculate the probability of him making exactly three free throws and missing two. So this is a formula that you need to include in your compositional book and certainly in your notes. This is the binomial probability formula. And this is included in the AP exam, but again, we will use the binomial CDF and the binomial PDF buttons on our calculator to do these calculations or do this formula for us. So it's not a formula that we have to spend a lot of time um, understanding, but it is something that we need to be familiar with. So n choose k is a way to calculate how many combinations or how many different arrangements there are of our combinations. p is our probability of success. k is the number of successes. So 1 minus p is our probability of failure. And n minus k is our number of failures. Okay? So again, as long as you understand that formula a, a little bit, you'll be able to understand the problems that we're going to be able to do. So let's take a look at a binomial problem that's not necessarily Kobe Bryant shooting free throws. Here's an example of a child um, whose parents um, have... Okay, so here's a binomial problem that we're going to use that doesn't involve Kobe Bryant shooting free throws. We have two parents who have figured out that the probability of their children having type O blood is 0.25. So first of all, we need to check, is this a binomial situation? So once again, we do that the acronym, how convenient, by, is this, there are two events, yes, either they have type O, or no, they don't, nomial, are there a fixed number of trials, and they asked if the children, parents have five children, so yes, there's a fixed nom nom number of trials, I independent, so just because the first child has type O blood doesn't influence the, the second child, when they're not like more likely or less likely to have um, type O blood, and then all which is, are all probabilities equal? And they told us that all probabilities are 0.25. So all four criteria are met to be binomial. That's how you check, and that's what you would have to write out. So if you're using this, we would actually want to figure out what is the probability that exactly three of the children have type O blood. So it's kind of similar to the Kobe Bryant, him shooting three out of the five free throws. So here's the five, choose three. This is how many different ways you can arrange three successes out of five, which remember we found out was 10, but the five choose three is how you would write that out mathematically. Times 0.25 is your probability of success. K here is the number of successes. There's your three. The probability then of failure would be 0.75, one minus 0.25, and the number of successes would be two if we want the total of five children. So we plug that in our calculator, and it comes out to be about 8.7, 8.8%. So should the parents be surprised if they're more than three of their children typo? 
Um, before I get into that, please note that this calculation can be done with the binomial CDF, and we will show this in class, how to use the binomial CDF to do this calculation, and we'll do everything for you. You won't have to type anything in, except the numbers that you need, okay? Now, part B is, a, should be the parents should be surprised if more than three of their children have type O blood? Well, more than three would be having four children with type O or five children. Three, technically, is not more than three. So to do this one, as you can see, we'd have to figure out the probability of four children and figure out the probability of five children and add it together. So we use the formula twice, once for four children, once for five children, and we find out, wow, together, that's about one and a half percent. And that would be, again, a pretty big surprise for the parent. If they had, there's a one and a half percent chance that four or five children would have type O blood. Um, but again, we're not going to worry too much about this formula because we're going to learn how to use the binomial CDF button to actually solve this problem. And I'm sorry, the first problem here, where we won't want th three and only three, is actually binomial PDF. And again, I'll show that in class how this works. Okay, so include these notes in your um, compositional book and or the notes that were provided on this. And thank you for watching this video.